The Sunderland Minster is holding a special art gallery today. Children who have lost loved ones made artwork and animation videos to help them get over the heartbreak. Melanie Hanny and Elaine Drainfield are the organisers of the event and they speak to me about what the children did and how it helps them. They actually focus on creating something and something that becomes theirs and when it becomes theirs that gives them value. When they see success like in this exhibition where um, it's presented to such a professional standard and it's their work and they've done that, that gives them self-esteem. So that's the, the first sort of emotion that comes out of doing the project. Obviously the second one is whatever we're tackling and with this particular project this was the first time we'd actually worked with children who have bereavement issues and that in itself was extremely interesting um, and I think although unwillingly they probably allowed themselves to feel safe within the environment that we provided for them safe enough for them to explore their emotions and to express in a variety of ways which were very very different to mainstream children um, exactly how they felt how did you get involved in the project well the work that i do is kind of more coaching than counseling and i wondered whether there was a kind of a connection and also i'm really interested in um, doing kind of scratch video and experimental video and live footage and I didn't know whether that would work because you don't know who the people are that are going to turn up and on a previous project there was um, one of the ch children was really interested in the recording technology there might have been somebody interested this time around in doing something experimental we just didn't know well, and, um, and you don't know We're here in Chopwell Woods today for the children's 2K zombie run. Let's go and find out what it's all about. The race the children will be joining is for fun. The children are all zombie fans, so it's a good idea. The race is also a good way of keeping fit. Penny Han is the organiser and she tells us why she came up with the idea. I love horror films, anything to do with them, um, monsters and things that go bump in the night basically. And um, because I heard about this event that was going to be happening over in America, I thought mm -hmm. I've got to do one of those. So um, the two lads who work in the business with me, they do already do events, so we thought well, we can just add in this as part of the event. Can't be that difficult, right? Mm -hmm. Kids and zombies and people with adults and zombies. So um, that's how it all came about. We linked in with the Forestry Commission as well, and they were really excited about the idea about getting people out in the woods. Mm -hmm. So that was where it came from. It was just a random idea. Let's do a zombie one. This scary zombie is Ryan. He's a volunteer here at Schooltopia and he loves scaring children. I've, well, I've always been like a zombie fanatic, like so games, films, books, anything like that. And um, I've done a, I did a zombie role playing game down south and I always thought, well, that, that sounds fun, like to be a zombie and I've always wanted to do stuff like this. And I thought, well, give it a go, sounds good fun. Ryan is only a part time zombie. In real life, he's not that scary. They're coming up to their final lap. The zombies are all hiding behind the trees. Shh, here they come. Today, the world's largest technology show in Europe, Comes to Newcastle, is full of crazy inventions and James Bond-like gadgets. So let's go and see what there is. Thousands of visitors come every year to the Maker's Fair. There's so much to see. The show is put together by makers of exciting inventions and wouldn't be as successful if it wasn't for their skills. Let's go and meet the makers. 
Today I am Fiona and this is Dr Numpty. So it's Dr N Umpty. Most of, most of the equipment, most of the stuff you see is built from junk, it's built from computers people have chucked out and we just get the innards and rewire them. It's very, very low-fi. I mean, believe it or not, we are not actually genuine scientists. Hey! Yeah, that makes me a sound. Why are you here today and what have you got on display? There's a lot of machines from the 70s all the way up to the 90s uh, showing how computers evolved. And for children, it's a good way of showing them what computers were like in the past, educating them in that respect. So what have you got here? We've got uh, how Apple started, the Apple II and the Apple IIc game system from the 80s, running Space Invaders. Do you find that the children are really interested in it? Yeah, I mean, they really like simple games. I work at Astrium, which is the company that's making the Mars rover structure. Can you tell me what it is? So this is Bridget. She's the first um, prototype that we made. So we made her to develop the Mars rover body. So she's not actually going to Mars, but we learned things making her that we're going to use when we actually make the final Mars rover. It's been a fantastic day here at the Makers Fair. We've seen lots of creative things and hopefully it's inspired you at home. A study conducted by eight European countries, including the UK, was published last week. The study revealed that drinking a can of fizzy drink a day can leave you at risk of getting type 2 diabetes. Linda Wood is from Diabetes UK. She's going to explain to us what type 2 diabetes is and why we should be worried. Type 2 diabetes occurs when the pancreas, where, the, where insulin is produced, isn't working properly. So there's not enough insulin being produced or it's not it's not sufficient to um, cope with the body's needs but ultimately they will probably have to go on to taking some form of uh, tablets um, and then eventually their body will stop producing insulin altogether and they will go on to having to inject insulin so it's a progressive condition. New Year's 11 like most kids her age she stops off after school to get her favourite drink and her favourite sweets so I go to ask her if she's worried about the study. Yeah, I am because my mum has type 2 diabetes and I have to care for her and make sure she's okay. And I've seen the pain she has to go through and it's really difficult. She has to maintain a balanced diet and exercise and I have to take her blood on a daily basis. Has it put you off hearing about the study? It has because um, I can't live without my cock. <laughs> Like, I buy a can every day and then, like, I hate, I read something like that and then I just, it puts me off because I don't, I don't want to get type 2 diabetes. There isn't enough evidence to suggest fizzy drinks do give you type 2 diabetes, but doctors do recommend that you drink less and do more exercise.